Добрый день, меня зовут Алексей Лауэр, я региональный менеджер EU Business School. До большого удовольствия для меня сегодня презентовать вам наше высшее учебное заведение. И начну, пожалуй, с истории. Да, 1973 год, это когда была создана EU Business School, это швейцарская бизнес-школа. Обучение проходит на пяти кампусах в трех странах. Если мы говорим про Испанию, то это Барселона. Если мы говорим про Германию, то это Мюнхен. Если мы говорим про Швейцарию, то это Монтро и Женева. И также онлайн-кампус. Должен отметить, что наши студенты имеют прекрасную возможность а, обучаться на различных кампусах. Что я имею в виду? То есть если наш студент начинает, например, в Мюнхене и после первого года обучения решает а, передвинуться, а, обучаться в Испании, в Барселоне, то мы предоставляем эту возможность. Почему? Потому что обучение проходит все на английском языке. То есть наши студенты обучаются на всех кампусах на английском языке и могут э, начать учиться в одном кампусе и продолжить в другом. К тому же многие программы, они идентичны, поэтому эта возможность, э, в принципе, существует для всех программ и направлений. Сейчас я бы хотел, наверное, сказать э, в первую очередь о многонациональности наших студентов, 98% наших студентов – это э, студенты из разных стран всего мира. Да? То есть, э, так как образование проходит на английском языке, также это прекрасная возможность э, обмена опытом, культурами и языковыми знаниями. Э, небольшие группы. В среднем 15 человек в каждом классе обучается в нашем э, университете. Если мы говорим про «experimental business education», Здесь я бы хотел отметить о наших визитах в различные крупные компании, которые организуют EU Business School для студентов. То есть наши студенты имеют прекрасную возможность посещения различных компаний, где их представители проводят экскурсии по самому офису, рассказывают о их стратегиях, о их бизнес-модели и развитии в будущем. Также о наших рейтингах. Как вы можете видеть на этом слайде, Uh, наша гордость – это 4 звезды из 5 QR Stars uh, Excellent in Business Education. Да, то есть это очень высокая оценка для нас. Uh, также uh, первое место по версии SEO Magazine uh, по онлайн MBA. Затем нужно отметить uh, по версии QS MBA Guide пятое место по возврату инвестиций в образование. И шестое место по версии Capital Magazine – как лучшая бизнес-школа для девушек-студентов. Это лишь некоторые наши рейтинги. Также я вас приглашаю на нашу веб-страницу, где вы можете увидеть остальные наши рейтинги. Мы занимаем всегда топовые позиции. Если мы вернемся к нашему предыдущему слайду, то здесь я бы хотел отметить еще один пункт – это… Uh, building of Business Personality – это как отдельная такая программа, как предмет в основе обучения, где uh, наши преподаватели, профессора uh, создают такой бизнес персоналити каждого студента. То есть это помощь наших студентов развить себя именно как uh, в бизнесе, в какой структуре, в каком направлении, а также построить именно себя как бизнес-личность, потому что это первое, что должен человек продавать. Да. Если мы говорим о факульте в бизнес experience, то мы говорим о наших профессорах в практиках. Что это значит? То есть наши профессора – это эм, профессора, которые на самом деле работают в сфере, э, то ли в другой сфере бизнеса. Да? То есть либо они забывают, занимают какие-то топовые позиции в крупнейших компаниях, либо это бизнесмены. Поэтому на каждом уроке они рассказывают о каких-то реальных бизнес-кейсах да, и разбирают с нашими студентами, что позволяет более интерактивное общение, задавать вопросы профессорам и более актуальную информацию иметь о бизнес-структурах, которые сейчас там существуют на рынке. Также хотел бы отметить наши аккредитации, то есть дипломы, которые получают наши выпускники. Ну, Во-первых, это международный аккредитованный диплом, организациями, которые вы видите на своих экранах. Это швейцарский международный диплом, который аккредитован. Это один из дипломов, которые получают наши выпускники. 
помимо нашего швейцарского диплома, также наши выпускники получают дипломы наших партнеров, университетов партнеров, в зависимости от выбранной программы. Если мы говорим про университет в Дерби, это программа с нашим английским университетом партнером университет Дерби. Также другой наш партнер, английский диплом University of Rockhampton, London. Да, то есть в зависимости от программы студент может получить также этот диплом. Либо ЮКАМ, университет католика де Мурсия. Тоже еще один государственный диплом, который могут получить наши выпускники. То есть, опять же, в зависимости от программы, да, выбранной, наши студенты имеют возможность, помимо того, как я говорил, смены кампуса да, после первого года, также они имеют возможность смены программы. То есть, если студент начал на одной программе изучать да, там, business education, то он может в течение года поменять свое решение и сменить как кампус, так и программу. Мировые лидеры бизнеса, экономики и политики. Это одни из немногих наших гостей, которые посещают нас и проводят семинары. Должен отметить, что это интерактивные семинары, и наши студенты имеют прекрасную возможность задать вопросы этим лидерам и получить на них ответ. Здесь на экране вы можете видеть лишь некоторые примеры, такие как бывший президент Швейцарии, глава дома в Нестле, глава Доха Банк Групп, это наш бывший выпускник, нужно отметить. Также глава часового дела Луивитон, дома Луивитон, и генеральный секретарь Объединенных Наций Кофе да? Это только некоторые примеры, и эти, эти лидеры постоянно посещают ю бизнес школу и проводят семинары различные для наших студентов и выпускников также. Здесь вы можете увидеть один из примеров посещения компании, о которых я говорил до этого. Это HP, как вы видите. То есть на каждом этом посещении для студентов проводится экскурсия по офису, рассказывают о их программе, о их стратегиях и, возможно, каких-то маркетинг развитию. Да? То есть должен отметить, что подобные визиты EU Business School проводит каждый месяц для наших студентов. То есть это достаточно часто. Здесь также вы можете увидеть некоторые из примеров визитов, либо визитов нас, лидеров, различных спикеров. Также один из примеров Tesla, да, всем известная компания. Теперь я бы хотел поговорить про кампусы. Да, то есть, как я говорил до этого, у нас пять кампусов, которые находятся на территории трех стран. Первый, про который я хотел бы поговорить, это Барселона, Испания. Здесь у нас два здания. Первое, которое вы видите по левую сторону, это пятиэтажное здание. Первое здание, которое мы купили в Барселоне. И по правую сторону вы видите десятиэтажное новое здание, которое мы открыли буквально два года назад. В среднем это 1500 студентов в году обучается на территории обоих кампусов. Должен отметить, что оба кампуса находятся в бизнес-квартале Барселоны. То есть это Авенида Бегональ. Это, то есть наши студенты всегда находятся в окружении такой бизнес-среды, да, то есть э, вокруг нас находятся крупнейшие мировые компании, в том числе компании Большой Четверки. PricewaterhouseCoopers находится буквально через дорогу от нас, как и другие компании, в том числе IBM. Это, конечно же, позволяет нашим студентам постоянно находиться в такой бизнес-среде и чувствовать себя, то есть более комфортно изучая бизнес education Помимо того, что мы проводим образование да, на, на различных наших кампусах, также наши студенты имеют возможность а, проведения различных а, участия в различных мероприятиях на кампусе. Это спортивные клубы, воркшопы, мастер-классы, благотворительные мероприятия, визиты в компании, о которых я говорил до этого, тематические вечера и, конечно же, конференции, о которых я также уже упоминал. Следующий наш кампус – это Женева. Должен отметить, что в Женеве наш кампус уже существует достаточно давно. Он находился в центре города, но буквально год назад, в январе прошлого года, 2020 мы открыли новый кампус, который более крупный. В среднем 350 студентов в году могут обучаться в нем. То есть это новое здание, новые инсталляции и находится в самом центре города. 
Как известно, Женева – это такой европейский центр политики, бизнеса, экономики. Здесь также мы проводим различные мероприятия, как можете видеть на фотографиях. Ну и затем еще один наш кампус, который находится в Швейцарии. Это небольшой студенческий, такой динамический городок Монтро. Здесь наш кампус находится в бутик-кампусе, таком в особняке 18 века на берегу Женевского озера. То есть это по другую сторону от Женевы, примерно полтора часа езды на общественном транспорте, либо на личном транспорте. То есть это небольшой кампус, где обучается в среднем 120 студентов в году. Также на нем проводим мероприятия для наших студентов, помимо обучения. Германия, Мюнхен. Ну, как известно, Мюнхен – это такой как бы, экономически развитый очень город в Баварии, в Германии. Здесь у нас находится кампус в самом центре города, опять же. Это всего две станции метро от центральной площади города. А в среднем здесь обучается 700 студентов в году. Ну и как небольшая деталь – Через дорогу от кампуса находится огромная площадь, где проходит Октоберфест. Так что этот кампус такой очень стратегический для нас и находится опять же в самом центре города. Как вы можете здесь видеть на фотографиях, это также некоторые из мероприятий, которые мы проводим на этом кампусе в Германии. И пятый кампус – это онлайн-кампус. Здесь я должен отметить, что этот кампус существует с 2012 года, то есть ему уже более 8 лет. То есть это не какая-то новая мера, которая была принята в связи с пандемией. Да? То есть это кампус, который существует уже давно и, как вы видите на экране, занимает топовые позиции уже в рейтингах. Теперь я бы хотел рассказать вам про наши программы. Ну, в первую очередь, я должен был сказать вам про наши летние программы, которые проходят а, на базе нашего кампуса в Барселоне. Конечно же, лето, Барселона. А, здесь вы можете видеть на своем экране программу, которая составлена на, на три недели. Здесь вы можете видеть некоторые предметы, которые изучают наши студенты. А, интейки – это июль и август. В течение трех недель, да, три недели в июле, три недели в августе. С понедельника по пятницу проходит обучение, также до обеда проходит обучение, после обеда наши студенты также имеют возможность посещения различных компаний, каких-то семинаров, либо какие-то туристические программы, экскурсионные. То есть это такое знакомство с кампусом, с Барселоной, с международным составом студентов, и, конечно же, с бизнес-образованием. То есть наши студенты имеют возможность уже ознакомиться, что такое бизнес-образование, как оно проходит. Если мы говорим про эту программу, что здесь входит? Здесь входит практически все. Учебные материалы, проживание, страховка, церемония окончания программы, визиты, о которых я говорил. То есть это полная программа, где не включается только перелет и трансфер. Да? Цену этой программы можете видеть на экране. Также помимо э, этой программы на три недели существует э, Business Summer School, которая рассчитана на четыре э, сессии. Каждая сессия по две недели. Здесь вы можете увидеть, в зависимости от сессии э, проходят те или другие программы, направления, да, то есть предметы, которые преподаются там. Как вы можете увидеть, э, то же самое с понедельника по пятницу. По утрам проходит обучение, по вечерам те же самые программы, которые были в предыдущем. Да. Цена здесь уже указана за две недели. И, как вы можете увидеть, здесь входит практически все, кроме проживания, проживания и питания, соответственно. То есть каждый студент может выбрать походящую для него программу. Либо три недели все включено, либо две недели без жилья, и уже выбирая по секциям туда, когда ему удобно. То есть это две секции в июле и две секции в августе. Помимо летней программы в Барселоне, также у нас существует зимняя программа, зимняя школа. Предметы ровно такие же, как у летней. Да? Также это несколько секций по нескольким предметам. Две недели длительность. 
Здесь вы можете увидеть цену точно такая же, как в Барселоне, только эта школа проходит в Мюнхене, в Германии. И то же самое, входит все, кроме проживания и питания, ну и, соответственно, перелеты и трансфер. Подготовительные программы и бакалавриат. Сперва хотел бы отметить Foundation Program. Это наша подготовительная программа, которая позволяет подготовиться к бакалавриату. Есть либо основанная только на улучшении английского языка, либо улучшении английского языка и также вводные предметы в бизнес-образование. То есть каждый студент может для себя выбрать, какую программу для него интереснее. Как вы можете видеть... Цены на экране и также длительность каждой из программ 13 недель. Она длится ровно столько же, сколько один семестр бакалавра. 13 недель. И здесь вы видите начало занятий. Бакалавриат. Различные программы в зависимости от партнера. В среднем обучение проходит 3 года, 7 либо 6 семестров. Здесь вы видите направления, которые проходят в течение 7 семестров, 3 года. Цены также вы можете увидеть. 6450 евро, если мы говорим про Германию онлайн и Барселону, да, про Испанию. И 13800 швейцарских франков, франков, если мы говорим про Швейцарию. И также вы можете увидеть некоторые из направлений, которые изучаются на Маклавриате. Здесь также вы можете увидеть некоторые направления, которые изучают наши студенты с University of Derby. В этом случае обучение проходит также 3 года, но уже 6 семестров. Цена за каждый семестр также вы можете увидеть на своем экране. И некоторые из направлений, которые изучаются вместе с Дербер. Магистратура MBA. Здесь должен отметить, что направления, они примерно идентичны, как в бакалавриате. Да? То есть, как можете видеть, менеджмент, маркетинг, финансы, цифровой бизнес, туризм, бизнес индустрии моды и лакшери. Здесь нужно отметить, что обучение проходит в течение года, так же как на магистратуру, так и на MBA. Цены, как вы можете увидеть, сначала вы можете увидеть цену за магистратуру 4600 евро, если мы говорим про Испанию и Германию, если Швейцария 9600 франков. Если мы говорим про MBA, то здесь вы сначала можете увидеть Испанию цену, затем Германию и затем Швейцарию. Также должен отметить, что в нашем университете существует eu Career Services. Это отдельный департамент, который помогает нашим студентам и выпускникам с поиском практики, работы, либо по созданию собственного профиля в LinkedIn, резюме, также искусство нетворга, процесс отбора персонала. То есть это такой департамент, который полностью занимается помощью нашим студентам с трудоустройством, я бы сказал. Да? То есть должен отметить, что 93% наших выпускников в течение полугода после окончания образования в u Business School получают работу в крупнейших мировых компаниях. То есть это очень высокий показатель трудоустройства после окончания университета. Также этот департамент проводит выставку вакансий. Это огромная выставка с более чем 500 участников, которые участвуют в этом мероприятии. Огромное количество компаний, с которыми мы сотрудничаем. То есть мы сотрудничаем больше, чем 500 компаний во всем мире. И эти компании с удовольствием проводят собеседования для наших студентов либо выпускников. То есть и для наших студентов, конечно, это возможность заявить о себе, рассказать о себе, предоставить свое резюме, и затем эти компании контактируют с нашими студентами и принимают их на работу на ту и другую должность. Здесь вы можете увидеть лишь некоторые примеры компаний, которые участвуют в этих выставках. Также должен отметить, что в течение почти 50 лет нашего опыта в сфере образования мы уже насчитываем более 27 тысяч выпускников. Здесь вы можете видеть некоторые компании, в которых они трудоустраиваются, и также сферы, в которых работают наши выпускники. Это маркетинг, сервисы, консалтинг, финансы, банкинг, education и другие. Здесь также поведены лишь некоторые примеры да, компаний. То есть эти лого уже говорят за себя. Да, масштабность этих компаний, где работают наши выпускники. Также еще одни из некоторых примеров. И примеры наших выпускников, да, то есть это success stories наши. Здесь вы можете увидеть главу Манчестер Сити футбольный клуб, 
да, он отмечает а, именно то, что ему больше всего понравилось а, в U Business School, это возможность смены кампусов, да, то, то, о чем я говорил в самом начале нашей презентации. Также вы можете видеть одного из наших выпускников, это Senior Technical Program Manager Amazon. Да, он больше всего отмечает именно возможность а, как бы, а, вот этого бизнес personality development, да, о том, о чем он говорил прежде. Как, тоже. Global Camper Manager, Digital E-Commerce Camper. Стефан, uh, это наш тоже выпускник, он занимает одну из топовых позиций менеджмента в Кампер, и он оценивает в Business School именно вот это интернациональность студентов и возможности обмена опытом с различными студентами со всего мира. Здесь лишь некоторые примеры тоже uh, наших выпускников и компаний, где вы можете увидеть, где они работают. Да? United Nations, HP. Adidas. Это лишь некоторые примеры. Да? На этой странице я вас приглашаю на наши социальные сети. Приглашаю вас на наш YouTube-канал, где вы можете увидеть различные видео о нашем высшем учебном заведении. Также примеры наших выпускников, интервью с ними, либо посещение различных компаний и также визиты наших а, лидеров. На этом у меня все. Спасибо большое за участие, спасибо за внимание к U-Business School. Если у вас будут какие-то вопросы, с удовольствием отвечу вам на персональных встречах. Um, okay, so hello everybody, my name is Giovanni. I am a former student. Um, I double majored in international affairs and international business, and I've been working as an admissions counselor for almost two years now. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about John Kemp University. We are the largest American university in Italy. Um, we're located in Rome. We are a 20 minute walk away from the Colosseum, 25 minute walk away from the Vatican with a very international community. Let me show you. We have a little over a thousand students coming from over 70 countries in the world. As you can see, these are the nationalities represented on a campus. Here we are including our visiting students. Without our visiting students, we're talking about a 35% American population, 25% Italian, the remaining from all over the world. So at, at, a, at an American university in the heart of Rome, over 75% of our students is not Italian. Moving on, we have a relatively small community uh, with an average of 15 students per class. So what this means is that the professors will know our students by name. Um, they're, of course, very available and always easy to talk to. Let me show you some of the uh, measures that we've adopted to tackle the global pandemic. Of course, we are going through trying times, and this is what uh, we've been doing. So we've... Uh, um, We've installed thermo scanning and of course hand sanitizing um, everything to uh, make sure that our students are able to get uh, you know, into the, uh, the academic building safely. And then there's also this hybrid methodology of learning that we've adopted. So our students can follow the lectures online through the platform that the university has provided them with, or they can attend the classes physically on campus. Um, of course, we are making sure that uh, the uh, safe measures um, are being adopted and uh, that social distancing is of course being respected and in, in all this we are still following the Italian government's uh, procedures. So I don't know if you're familiar with the, Amer the American academic system but we allow for plenty of freedom plenty of room to play with when it comes to shaping um, the students academic path. So we have majors and minors. We have 14 majors. What are the majors? The majors are the uh, main fields of a student's degree. And the beautiful thing is that if a uh, student had, uh, let's say, different uh, interests, they will be able to combine them to by pursuing uh, two majors or per perhaps by pursuing one major and the different minors I was telling you about. We have 19 minors, and these are uh, smaller fields in which our students can specialize. Uh, 
As you can see, the majors, we divide it into three different macro areas. We have the area of business, area of social sciences, as well as the area of humanities and classic studies. Um, I would say most popular ones are international business, economics and finance. We have international affairs and psychology. And then we have our history and history. So I would say these are the most popular um, majors at JCU. But the, uh, the beautiful thing about it is that, of course, the many, many institutions that are available in the capital city, in the eternal city of Rome, as well as the, um, of course, endless history on each and every corner uh, of the city will provide our students with a very enriching academic experience. Now, as far as the Center for Career Services, regardless of what our students would like to study, they will have uh, over 900 job and internship opportunities with over 600 both Italian and international organizations. Just to name a few, these are all places where students work every single semester. For example, we have students working at Associated Press, Bulgari, Coca-Cola, Ernst & Young, Hilton, IBM. And then of course, we like to take advantage of the many international institutions Institutions which are located in the eternal city. So we have students working at the Italian Prime Minister's Office, the United Nations High Commission of Refugees, the World Food Program, the Food and Agriculture Organization. Two, three students every semester end up working at the U.S. Embassy to Italy. There is a Peruvian embassy, French embassy, a little bit of everything. Um, as far as the Institute for Entrepreneurship is concerned, uh, they work very closely with the uh, business department. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea, the university, the Institute for Entrepreneurship is headed by Professor Silvia Pulino, who is an entrepreneurship as well as a finance professor. And she uh, was able to obtain her Master of uh, Business Administration, her MBA at Harvard Business School. As for uh, the uh, Department for, uh, of Political Science and International Affairs, that department is headed by Pamela, Professor Pamela Harris, who, is, who got a, uh, her JD, her Juris Doctor, her law degree at Harvard Law School. Like I said, because you will find uh, you know, elite faculty as well as a world-class um, uh, community at, at JCU. So as for the uh, direct exchange program, if uh, our students would like to make their international experience even more international, by paying the same tuition, they could spend one semester or a whole year all over the world. For example, we have partner universities in Japan, South Korea, in Lebanon, in the UAE, in Egypt, and Nigeria. In Europe, we have Norway, Ireland, France, and Greece, as well as partner universities in Canada, um, in Mexico, Colombia, and of course, all over the United States. Usually, most popular destinations are California, Texas, Massachusetts, Florida, New York, of course. So a little bit of everything. And what our students could do is, like I said, regardless of what they would like to study, they could pursue to a major, a double major, a major and a minor, perhaps in business, and study one semester in Japan and then the following semester in Paris, or perhaps one whole year in New York City, one whole year in Los Angeles, they decide. Um, we, the student life is very rich at JCU. We have over 20 active student clubs. Two I always like to mention are the JCU Model United Nations Society and the Business Club. Um, for instance, the, the JCUMUN Society, what they do is they represent countries, they travel, they participate in international conferences. Um, two years ago, they went to Switzerland and Portugal to uh, participate in the uh, simulation of the United Nations session. And last year, we hosted the 10th edition of the JCU Model United Nations Society Conference by hosting ambassadors, great personalities, as well as high school and university students coming from Texas, coming from Switzerland, coming from Portugal, Spain, and Israel as well. Uh, an, an activity that the business club always organize uh, uh, is the uh, shadow a CEO activity. So what that means is our business students, what they do is they visit the headquarters of a, a big company. Usually, for example, two years ago, they visited the Lavazza company's headquarters, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest coffee uh, company in Italy. They went to Torino, to the north of Italy, and they visited the headquarters while following a one of their representatives around the, uh, the building, just to understand the business day-to-day -day operations and what it entails to lead a, an Italian company that is uh, very active uh, at an international but also at a national level. 
Moving on to the athletics department. So we have many different activities for our student athletes out there. If you're into sports, definitely we have tournaments in Rome and all over Europe for basketball, football, volleyball, cheerleading, swimming, swimming, tennis, and ping pong, as well as a gym. Um, in the Janiklo uh, residence, which is the hardware housing residential life office. Also inside the gym, um, all students have access to it, regardless of whether they're staying on campus or off campus. And you will find, you will be able to take fitness classes. For example, we have Zumba, we have uh, uh, Aikido, kickboxing, so also martial arts, as well as uh, fitness classes such as abs and legs. Uh, there is, uh, um, yeah, a little bit of everything. You'll find CrossFit classes too. Um, and plenty of, of, of opportunities to give back to, to the community student services offer, office offers. For example, we have 16 partner organizations where students usually end up doing is to teach English at the International Women's House, they teach English at the International Refugee Shelter, or they feed homeless people in Trastevere, we're one of the biggest Italian um, community service organizations, uh, and which is called uh, the Sant'Egidio community. These are some of the uh, pictures of our academic buildings. So top right, you see that's an, a typical classroom. As you can see, 10, 12 chairs for an average of 15 students per class. The Catelli campus is where the admissions office is located, where I'm speaking to you from. The Guarini campus, which is just a three minute walk away from the Critelli campus, is in the heart of Trastevere, the, the uh, historic center of Rome. What I always say is, you know, uh, while students are walking, uh, walking around to kind of picture the very fun atmosphere you will find in Rome, you know, picture cobblestones, pizzerias, coffee bars, loud Italians going, mamma mia pizzeria, right? So that's usually the very fun atmosphere you will find um, at JCU. And then top right, that is the Aula Magna, the conference hall where we host our biggest events. Last but not least, our Tiber campus. This picture was, of course, taken before the pandemic. Um, this is the cafeteria. Tiber campus hosts our Tiber Cafe, the cafeteria, as well as classrooms and student life offices. And last but not least, Largo de Fiorentini, our facility, where we host our fresco painting, painting, sketching, drawing, photography, as well as digital media production courses. Uh, this uh, student, uh, he's a current student, his name is Giggs Cole, and he's a South African artist. He got a full rights scholarship to JCU, and we'll talk about financial aid opportunities in a second. As far as JCU housing is concerned, we have two, three different housing options. They're all beautiful apartments, very close to campus, very well equipped. Um, something you uh, should know is that, like I said, so each and every housing building has a study rooms, student lounge, the fitness center you will be able to find at the Jenny Cooler residence, which is, by the way, accessible to all of our students, regardless of where they're staying. I would like to stress that. And then residential life, there's also the opportunity for students to work as a resident assistant for the housing and residential life office. And that would mean free housing and free meal plans. So they could, or they could also be living in the eternal city completely for free. So let's talk about the application process. Of, of course, we like to think of it as a very holistic approach. So what this means is that all students will not be judged on their grades and their grades only, but there is a multitude of factors that go into the application process. So as you can see, we require the applicant to complete an application form. They can either do that on our website or on Common App, which is the portal that many international applicants use. Then we will require to take a look at their transcripts. So we'll We'll take a look at their classes. We'll take a look at their grades. We do uh, need uh, two letters of recommendation. Those two should be academic, so written by uh, their professors. A 600 word personal essay, um, when we ask the, uh, the student to talk about themselves, why they think they will be a great fit for JCU. Um, interview by phone scupper in person. I'm usually the one leading the interviews. So hopefully if I made a good impression today, they will see my face again, fingers crossed. And then proof of English proficiency, unless they've been studying at an English speaking institution for two years. If that is not the case, no worries. We do accept IELTS, we do accept TOEFL, Duolingo. Um, usually the level we need is C1, or we can also schedule a meeting with one of our uh, professors from the English language uh, department. And uh, they're usually the ones scheduling the uh, a test, a virtual test. So that's also available to our um, applicants. 
Let's talk figures. So one year at JCU is 18,000 euro. However, when I was a student um, six years ago, uh, tuition fees was 17,000. I ended up paying 5,600. Divided into two semesters, 2,800, 2,800. Why is this important? Because we have scholarships. We have scholarships that cover 20, 50, 70, and 100% of our tuition fees. Over 85% of our students receive financial aid. And we have need-based and merit-based scholarships. So what this means is, as I was saying, we will take a look at our students' uh, application process, their grades, their classes. But we're also very interested in their uh, family's financial situation, as well as any extracurricular activities they might have been involved in. If they play sports, if they play um, an instrument, if they have work and experience, um, if they've traveled, we want to know. Of course, we want to make sure that our applicants are very well-rounded members of their community, very active, and that they will thrive at an international community such as the one we have at JCU. Of course, what happens after JCU? Um, they'll be joining an alumni network of over 10,000 students. And uh, just to give you an idea that the university has that reputation and that we will help you should you be interested in uh, continuing your academic uh, path at one of the big institutions, or perhaps if you would like to start your career, we will also help with that. As you can see, we've had students continue their studies at Cambridge, Columbia, Georgetown, IE Business School, Johns Hopkins, King's College, LSC, NYU, Oxford, just to name a few. We have Sciences Po, Bocconi, Harvard, of course. So a little bit of everything. And for the class of 2019, 90% um, of our students had found employment within one year um, of the graduation and uh, for the class of 2018 the year uh, before 70 so percent of our students had found employment within one year and then 19 percent had already enrolled at a graduate program for either a master's or a phd like i said just to give you an idea that we will help you uh, regardless of what you would like to do in uh, in the future so after you graduate from jcu Last slide, of course. Uh, so any, as you can see, the uh, to how to contact us, just follow us on social media. You'll find us on Instagram, you'll find us on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, and if you would like to use the uh, QR code to register for our newsletter, my name is Giovanni. My email is graguso at johncabot.edu. And I'll be more than happy to, to answer any questions you may have. And just, uh, uh, let's say, um, just to let you know what kind of students we get at JCU. I always say that our university was uh, named after an explorer, an Italian explorer who in the 1500s, uh, John Cabot traveled to uh, North America, right? Why am I saying this? Why is this important? Because that's usually the type of student we get. We're looking for an explorer who's willing to step out of their comfort zone and have their life changed in Rome and of course, wherever JCU will take them. So hoping that you will be our explorer. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Rome and to answering any questions you may have. Have a wonderful day. Ciao. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul McLean. I'm the headmaster and director of the American International School in Salzburg, Austria. I'm very pleased to be asked by the DEC Associates to meet with you today virtually and to introduce you to what I consider a very, very special international boarding school, the American International School in Salzburg. We have had over the years many outstanding students from Ukraine, and uh, we hope, of course, uh, to continue that trend, and we hope that many more uh, students from Ukraine come to us and take advantage of the academic and educational offerings that we provide in one of the most beautiful and safe cities in the world. Many of those students previously have gone on to outstanding academic uh, careers um, and very effective and successful university studies upon graduation from our school. We are a college preparatory school and we are, in my opinion, a very special college preparatory school so that I hope that with this introduction, I can reveal to you what is so uh, special and perhaps even um, particular about our school so that you have a very good idea of what we do, perhaps what we don't do, and if this might be a good 
choice or at least a consideration for you and your family and in making or perhaps helpful in making one of the most important decisions that you can make in your life which is concerning the appropriate and very valuable education of your children which will have a great deal to do with the success of their future. So what I want to do today is give you um, an overview of a few things. There's so much to know about a boarding school and there are so many questions that one can ask that I obviously will probably fail to answer all of your questions but if I go through most of the main points I think that you'll have a fairly good idea of what AIS Salzburg offers, what AIS Salzburg is about, its academic program and requirements, its social and boarding program and how that works and what a parent can expect from the school in, in that area. Uh, I want to talk also about uh, sports, free time, weekends, because I know that many parents are concerned about what happens when the students are not at a school, uh, are not in classes at a boarding school and want to be secure that uh, a decent amount of activity, sports, travel, etc. is built into the program. And then I want to speak uh, specifically to you about uh, the possibilities that open up for a student who has a diploma from our school, where they can go to university, what sort of diploma they have, what qualifications they need, depending on where their first choice would be and hopefully getting into that university of choice once they've completed our program. Because as I said, the first thing to know about AIS Salzburg is that it is a purely college preparatory school. 100% of our students upon graduation go on to university and are very, very successful at that after going through our preparatory program. So that is our main emphasis and that is what we do best. And I think we do that very, very well uh, given the context here at the school. Um, and last but not least then I want to mention just a couple of details about applications, about visas, about um, admissions requirements, about the summer school program and so on. I uh, hope that I don't bore you too much. I um, am the director and headmaster of the school but I also teach two classes every day. Uh, as a member of the history uh, department, history teachers you might know sometimes tend to bore people, the audience, a little bit. I'll try not to be boring. I'll try to stick to the facts. I know this will be uh, translated for you, um, and I hope that I can hit all the main points that will address most of your questions in this very brief interview. And of course, I'll try and remember to say it at the end of my uh, introduction as well, uh, any families interested in the school are welcome to visit any time a visit is possible. Of course, with the current uh, corona pandemic, visits are not possible. But as soon as that's possible, again, we welcome families at any time to visit our halls, to visit our school, because we think it's a very, very special place. And you need to see it. You need to feel it. Your child needs to see the other students here, meet the teachers, see the dormitory room, see how beautiful the city of Salzburg is in order to make an informed decision. And although we're virtual for the time being, I would still like to extend the, uh, the invitation to all of you that when it's possible, please consider coming to visit the school if your considerations are to that point that you would like to see our school and speak with us directly and meet us personally rather than online as we are now. Good. Um, let me tell you just briefly about the school and its history. The school was founded in 1976. AIS Salzburg is the first and the oldest international boarding school in Austria. Um, it's founded in 1976. We are now in our 45th year. Personally, I have been here at the school since um, 1990, so this is my 30th year and my 24th year as the headmaster and director of the school. Um, so when it comes to asking questions, uh, I can answer most of them. At least I've been around long enough that I think most of the questions uh, that come to me, I can successfully answer. And I think I do know about this school uh, in a relatively detailed and intimate way as only someone who has been in a program for this many years would be able to do. Uh, the school is located inside the city limits of Salzburg, Austria. If you've never been to Salzburg, it is a small city of about 150,000 uh, people. The school sits actually just on the south side of the city in the midst of a green belt region. So that means in front of the school and behind the school uh, there are open green fields. Uh, you feel like you're in the countryside, but in actuality we're only about 10 minutes by public bus from the center of the city of Salzburg. Salzburg, of course, is well uh, known for the birth, being the birthplace of uh, Mozart, for its summer music festival, for its culture, um, and for tourism, uh, because Salzburg sits just in the foothills of the Alps. 
The skiing in this region is excellent and some of the best in the world. And the city itself is so picturesque uh, and centrally located in Europe that it's uh, a very common place for tourists to stop. And most of those tourists, when they visit Salzburg, are quite impressed with the uh, beauty, uh, small size, and accessibility of the city of Salzburg. It is, I will say, a little bit unusual that a boarding school would be located inside a city limits, but for us that works uh, to our great advantage, to the advantage of our students. Being a small college preparatory school with a very demanding academic program, it's very important that our students have the opportunity to, opportunity to get off campus occasionally, but remain safe and Salzburg, Austria provides that uh, opportunity perfectly. The city is small, it is very, very safe, the public transport is very good and very reliable, it's clean, you don't have any of the major uh, city urban problems that you would have in a much larger city. You're immediately within minutes uh, in the countryside here and in the Alps, which are just literally at the, at the end of the street. So we have a situation where the students can be at home here on campus and of course their academic life and social life takes place here on campus and is organized by the school in our school programming but during uh, select free time hours they can leave the uh, campus and go into the city center as i said 10 minutes with the public bus they can enjoy a bit of time away from the school against uh, away from the eyes of supervisors uh, adults teachers administrators etc and enjoy themselves in a very, very safe place uh, and a very beautiful place as well. So this uniqueness is one of the factors that makes the IS Salzburg a very, very pleasant place to be and a very um, memorable home against, uh, home away from home, excuse me, for all of our students, uh, especially those that are here for several, several years before graduation. A few other things of particular importance. This is a small school and it is designed to be this, a small school since 1976. The school has had a student body population on average of about 100 students. It sometimes varies and goes up. I think the most we've had here since I've been here in 30 years is about 120 students. The lowest number some, somewhere around 75 students. So between 75 and 125 students is the student body at this school. That's small. We think, and this is a very important position for us, we believe that the best college preparatory education, the best secondary school education possible can only take place in a small school context where very experienced teachers are working with a small group of students. They are also boarding students and they have the structure and possibility to be supervised and directed and guided in their studies, also cared for appropriately in their, in their personal development. Uh, and their growing maturity. We believe that in a small school where everybody from the headmaster to the janitor of the school knows the name of every student, knows and has met all of the parents of the students and has the ability to treat each student both as an individual and as a member of a small community that is very, very familiar. I don't know if that can be replaced in a much larger school. If you're looking at other uh, international boarding schools, you may be looking at schools that have upwards of 300 or more boarding students. I can tell you from experience that I would not trade this position that I have now for a school of that size because the personal interaction I have with each of my students, the fact that I'm able to teach two classes every day, uh, develops into a situation that is familiar, it is positive, it provides me with a great deal of satisfaction and I think on the side of the students and the parents as well, there's nothing that can replace that immediate close interaction and communication between a school as an institution and the individual families and students who make up the community of that school. Um, the school is uh, very much a boarding school. Uh, 80 80 to 85 percent of our students are full boarding students. That means this is a true boarding school. It is not a school in which the majority are day students and the boarding program is a small afterthought. This is a school that is designed as a boarding school, a place for students to work academically and be educated, but also to live and feel comfortable uh, in their surroundings and to uh, live in the accommodations of the school. Um, international in the sense that although the student numbers are small, let's say on average about 100 students every year, there are normally between 30 and 35 nationalities within the student body. In no time in the 30 years that I've been here has there been a majority of any nationality. That means the school is truly international. 
Uh, for example, presently there are seven students from Ukraine here at the school. There are also students here at the school from as far away as Aust Australia, uh, Japan, the United States, Mexico, Canada, um, students from all over the world. And although there are not many of them, they are incredibly diverse. This is a very, very valuable part of this school experience. You have the closeness of the other students. You work beside other students from all around the world. You become friends with them. You live in the dormitories with them. You participate in activities and sports with them. And you necessarily become a vital member of an international community. Within a few weeks or months of the start of the school year, uh, I can say that it is very true that nationalities themselves really don't matter much anymore. Everybody becomes an individual with a particular background that is here joining together for a very important purpose, which is the uh, excellent college preparatory education that will open the doors and unlock the doors to a further education that will be successful and hopefully um, a life for themselves that will be very, very successful and also oriented towards a global uh, world community, just as they experience in a small setting here at the school. Uh, let me briefly uh, mention, um, give you some information about the academic program at the school. Uh, the words American International School obviously implies that the school has an American academic program. The diploma that the school awards is an American high school diploma. That means that going to this school, uh, completing this program successfully and receiving the diploma is basically the same as if you were going to a college preparatory school in the United States. Most of the teachers are American or American trained. Um, the diploma and the school is accredited by the Middle States Association in the United States, as are most uh, international and American schools, universities, and colleges. Um, and it's very much organized along uh, philosophical lines of American pedagogy or American education. Therefore, it is not, uh, it doesn't have some of the elements that perhaps European families and European parents and students might be used to. Uh, here, for example, at the school, we do not run the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. We run our, run our own American High School Diploma Program. Uh, you might be familiar with the International Baccalaureate because it is quite common in many international schools, also in international schools there in Kiev uh, and around the world. The International Baccalaureate, however, is based upon the British Education Program. It reflects directly the A-level situation of secondary schools in Great Britain and requires, of course, that in 11th and 12th grade, the students have six courses only and exams in all six of those, which determine whether they receive the IB diploma or not. Here, you have four years of high school, and in those four years of high school, you have a certain number of required courses and subjects each year. Um, in mathematics, in English, in uh, foreign languages, in science, in social studies, in physical education, etc. Um, <clears throat> and when you complete those courses each year, you receive academic credits. Those credits add up then to receiving the diploma at the end of the four years of study. We also add on top of that within our academic program what are called advanced placement courses. Advanced placement courses are individual courses that a student can select to take that are particularly challenging. So these are normally subjects or courses that a student who's very interested and very talented in that area will choose. Basically, an AP course is a course that is taught at the university level while a student is still in high school. And if a student chooses to sit an exam in that AP subject and passes that exam, that will to do one of two things or both. It will either allow them admission into a better or more selective university, for example, in the UK or in North America, uh, or AP uh, exam results will achieve equivalency with international universities if the student also has the necessary language skills. So I'll talk more about that in just a bit when I talk about where our students go to, uh, go to university. But basically you have an American high school college preparatory program taught in, in English, obviously, by primarily American uh, teachers. The language teachers are all uh, native speakers. We have very high expectations of the students. They are sitting together in very small classes with very experienced teachers. One of the most uh, unique features of this school is that the teaching faculty is very long term. Many international schools have teachers that are changing all the time. Here we have teachers that have been here longer than I have. And I've been here now 30 years. So we have a very unusual situation in that excellent teachers come here to the school and they stay. 
Uh, they have great experience teaching our students in this setting, in this program, and are very, very successful in providing a very, a very high level of quality um, consistently year to year here at the school so that the preparation is obviously uh, optimal. Good. Uh, I wanted to mention briefly because it's quite common in Ukraine and in other places in Europe that many secondary high schools will have a, spe a specific emphasis in their curricular program. For example, I know schools in uh, Kiev that have an emphasis on economics or they have an e emphasis on science, physics, etc. or the school emphasizes language studies. Uh, that is not the case here. In an American college preparatory program like ours, uh, all of the students achieve the highest level in all subject areas uh, in a very broad sense by the time they graduate from the school so that then at the university when they specialize they are broadly prepared in all areas uh, for university studies and can go on to become very well-rounded, well-educated uh, citizens in a global uh, world today. The, um, I'm going to move on now to the boarding uh, program because time is obviously short. Uh, the students here, 85% um, of them most years, live here at the school on the campus. They live in single, double, and triple rooms. Uh, I would say 75% of the students are in double rooms. All of the rooms uh, here at the school have their own ensuite um, uh, facilities, shower and facilities. Um, more than half of the rooms have been uh, um, completely re redone uh, in the last two years. Uh, the rooms are quite comfortable and it's very easy for a student to feel uh, comfortably at home here. Uh, further, I want everyone to understand that this school does something unusual for a school this size especially. We have a completely double staff. In other words, our teaching faculty only teaches the formal academic courses and they specialize in that and do that very well. We have a completely separate staff that lives on campus that provides the uh, guidance, the care, the supervision, and parenting of the students in the boarding facilities. They do not teach credit-bearing courses. The teachers do not do weekend activities. So we have a completely double staff. That means that the total staff-student ratio at the school is less than four to one, which is quite remarkable. And it means that we can ask the resident staff to do what they do uh, to the best of their ability without having to be overwhelmed by teaching and other uh, duties and assignments where something is obviously not going to be done very well. So we have a completely double staff and that makes a big difference. That uh, resident care staff, as we call them, organize all of the weekend activities. They organize two excursions, uh, overnight excursions during the school year. We've been to Paris, to Berlin, to Rome, to Venice. Um, we haven't set the destinations for the fall excursion, which is five days and four nights coming up this next October. And the winter excursion in February will also be decided at some point this summer. That's a four day excursion, three nights, four days. Uh, again, outside of Austria, an important part of our uh, boarding program and social program as well. We also run a number of competitive sports. Uh, the school is a part of the Danube Valley Athletic uh, Conference. That's a group of 15 international schools between Munich and Budapest, whereby the schools will host other schools, uh, athletic teams for um, individual competitions or games or for tournaments. Uh, and share uh, season-ending tournaments amongst the various schools. Therefore, I frequently like to say that the athletics program here at the school, which more than half of the students here uh, participate in, is very enjoyable because, of course, if you like athletic competition, you want to further your uh, athletic abilities by competing. It certainly does that, but more importantly than that, you also have a very, very strong travel element. So it's competition, it's athletics, but it's also travel. Uh, to Budapest, to Vienna, to Bratislava, to Munich, for example, to many different locations for tournaments, which makes it an integral part of our uh, weekend program um, as well. Because this is a college preparatory school, one of the key features of this school and one of our most important um, goals is to ensure that every student that has the talent, that has the habits, that has the self-discipline, that has the uh, motivation and can put in the effort should be more than well prepared for university and that means for university admissions as well. One of the fundamental questions people ask when they're looking at an American international school with an American high school diploma is where is that diploma acceptable? Where can students go to university afterwards? 
Let me begin by telling you that one third of our students uh, each year that graduate go on to universities in North America, in the United States, in Canada, for example, where the diploma is perfectly acceptable and if they are accepted to the university with their grades, test scores, etc., uh, and prove their English language ability, they can go to university obviously in North America. That makes sense, that's logical. Many don't know or don't realize that students from our school are all acceptable to UK universities as well. The Uni uh, United Kingdom and the universities there require that they have our diploma, they prove their English ability, and they have at least three of these AP examinations or take three AP courses while they're in high school and pass those exams. Those AP exams are considered exactly the same as A-level examinations and qualify students for any universities in uh, the UK. Right now about a third of our students every year graduate and go on to the UK for their tertiary studies. Last but not least there are many families uh, also especially in the Ukraine uh, who want their children to stay in Austria and perhaps attend the Austrian university system. It's close by, it's safe, it's a beautiful country and it has an excellent university system as well. The requirements from our school graduating uh, with our diploma from AIS Salzburg and entering the Austrian university uh, system of universities is that they are required to have the diploma, prove their German language ability above the B2 level, <clears throat> excuse me, and they must have four advanced placement examinations passed. Now when I say that uh, a third of our students stay in Europe and many of those are going to Austrian universities once they graduate from the school, uh, you might be thinking that these four AP examinations is an extra load or requires extra time or tuition perhaps even. That is not the case. By doing the regular program here at the school, every student who graduates will have taken at least four AP courses. And if they did well in those courses, they will sit those exams. And if they understand the material, they will have passed those exams. So literally, every student who graduates from the school each year can qualify themselves to study in Europe, for example here in Austria or in Germany, uh, to study in the UK or to study in North America. They simply need to have our diploma, the sufficient number of AP exam results, and of course the language requirements of uh, the university depending upon the language of instruction at that university. Good. I'm going to finish up now by telling you very quickly a couple of things uh, about applications and just the nuts and bolts. We accept applications from students uh, age 12 to 17 for any grade level each year. Any student can enter the school and be accepted to the school at any of the grade levels, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Uh, we can accept those applications at any time. The deadline is only the point when our dormitories are full and we no longer have beds available, then we would start a waiting list. Uh, we advise, therefore, parents who are interested in the school and want to apply um, we, would, we would suggest that that application be submitted and completed by the beginning of May to be certain there are still places in the dormitory and that that uh, can be guaranteed. Secondly, and very importantly, the school has a, a very special status in Austria and because of that status is guaranteed all of the visas for our students to come here, to live here at the school, and none of our students are denied the right to get a visa to come to the school. If they are resident here on our campus, if they are insured through the school, if they have applied for the visa and the school um, sends in the invitation and confirmation letters that proves all of that, then they are guaranteed a visa which is for the entire school year and can be renewed each year by the school staff. Uh, that's a very important element because I know there's a lot of uncertainty out there about various visa requirements and whether or not a visa will be renewed. Here we're in a very safe situation where all students from Ukraine and elsewhere will receive a visa to live uh, here at the school and to go to school here for nine months during the school year and will be renewed each year until they complete the program. Last but not least, we have a summer program that starts uh, this coming summer on July 4th and goes through August 14th. There are three two-week sessions where students study either English or German. Many uh, parents and families will use the summer program as a sort of an introduction um, to being accepted for the school year in September. It's a good chance to get to know Salzburg. The teachers are the same in the summertime as during the school year. Obviously the facilities are the same which for many families means that the child then feels much more comfortable when the school year begins in September. They're already familiar with many aspects of living here at the school.
plus they've had the chance to improve their English or perhaps get a head start on their German language studies, which is a requirement in our program as well. So that's a brief overview. I'm afraid I've gone a little bit long. I'm, I apologize for that. But like I said, there's so much to know about a school like this one uh, that I at least hope I have answered most of the key questions for you. And as I promised, uh, allow me at the end to put forward an invitation as soon as it's possible. We would more than welcome any families who would like to come and visit uh, this school. There is no charge. You can stay here. Uh, we can help with accommodation and uh, the children can enter the classes and see the teachers, see the other students. There's really nothing that can replace that experience when you're trying to make a final decision about which is the right school for you. Personally, I will be coming to Ukraine as soon as that's possible. Most years, that's at least twice a year, either to uh, Kiev or to Odessa. I'm hoping that as soon as travel restrictions and vaccinations are widespread, uh, I will be able to um, come back and join the wonder wonderful people at DIC, uh, introduce myself and speak personally to any of you who would like to speak with me about the school and give you, I hope, honest, straightforward and uh, reliable information and answers to your questions. So thank you very, very much for spending the time uh, and thank you to the wonderful people at DEC for giving us this opportunity. Take care and thank you.